What's up, party animals? My name is Kezzy, and I just watched Turning Red. Now, this isn't what that video is about. I just really like the movie. Go watch it if you can. If you can't, find someone who can and then watch it with them because it's it's just it's a good movie. So it's the perfect topic and a perfect kind of segue to saying, um, I hate Furry Week in Atlanta. Holy crap, are they making bad decisions? So I've been wanting to go to Furry Week in Atlanta for a while, and I haven't gotten to go because it's on the other side of the United States, and I'm just not trying to do that right now. But they hired, paid, with money, a DJ from outside of the fandom. Now, I don't care about non-furry DJs most of the time, you know, but a furry con isn't a nightclub, and I don't even know who this guy is. If it, you know, last year, few years ago, they did something like Mystery Skulls. That was cool because Mystery Skulls kind of has a loosey-goosey connection to the furry fandom. With the animation aspect, their video was very uh, animated and that's a big part of furry life. But the, you know, but that's a big name. A lot of people know who Mystery Skulls is. This new guy, what, Smile or Joy Fart or, I don't know his name. And that's the problem, right? I don't know who this guy is. Dude's got like 3,000 Twitter followers, which I'm not saying this should be a popularity contest, but this guy in even the EDM scene is a nobody. Not to mention how no furries know of who the hell this guy is, and yet he's being hired, paid real money to DJ at a furry convention. And it makes absolutely no sense because this community has so much fucking talent. There is bountiful amounts of talent. I can name at least five furries that could probably throw down harder than whoever the hell got paid to DJ. And it's, it's hurtful. The furry fandom was a community built by the fans. It's not some commercialized thing. It's not a nightclub. It's a party put on by and for furries. With all this stuff coming out about volunteer work and not getting paid, um, the, the recent convention, I can't remember, like, all of Corgi events pulled some heinous things. And right in the wake of that, the dust has fairly settled and they're dropping primo dollar on these unknown DJs from across the country. Why? And it brings to a bigger problem because something that I've, I, I wanna make this channel because music in the furry fandom is slept on completely. No one gives a crap. And it sucks because I can tell you the thing that got me into both music and the furry fandom was a furry musician. They got me into all this, you know, not personally, but furry music has always been something that I have been drawn to. And I feel like I'm not alone in this. So many people, I, I have a Discord server and people think I'm good. Oh my God, you should see some of the people in that server. They are phenomenal. I, they, they put me to shame and that's okay because that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to be the best. I'm here to say music is in the fandom and it is so, so prevalent. It's everywhere. And you just have to spend like five seconds to know where to look. And it's beautiful music from people like Run, Definitely Run, to, to solo artists who do things that are just from the heart. I went to Barry Talks at BLFC and the amount of passion in their songs even though they were about furries, it was so raw. And I, I think that's huge. And I think that's a major part of the furry community is the fact that we are so, 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 so musical. I mean, people like Pepper Coyote exist. He's like the staple for being furry music. Now, granted, he's talking about animal genitals, which is a little sus, but you know, it's still a thing that is very common. Furry music isn't... I don't know what people think it is. I don't know why people are sleeping on it. And it bugs me because it doesn't need to be. Music is such a part of the experience. You know, we're not furries because we all want to be animals running around in the forest. Some of us do, me included to some extent. 
But we're furries because we like the animal and the human. We aren't just animals. We are people too, and people like music. So why is there some kind of divide here? Why is there some kind of thing that like, furry cons are owed a DJ? You know, what, one of the biggest talking points I see all the time is that furry DJs don't even get their badge comp. They can't even go to the convention that they're performing at without paying for it. They're paying for the privilege to DJ for this event? That's gross. That's extremely gross. Now, granted, that's been the norm forever. But then a con goes around and goes around all of the talent, every single individual furry that actually has something to offer to a musical atmosphere has been slept on in favor of some random DJ that no one's ever heard of. And they're getting paid. Why? 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 This isn't... This isn't... It's not a quality thing. I mean, sure, I'm kind of getting sick of the furry DJs that have been floating around the cons I've been to. Some of them, I'm not into their music. Hence why I'm doing my own thing. Hence why I'm grabbing a set of decks and changing that. But when you sleep on absolutely everyone who could possibly promote something good in the community, and you pay some rando who has absolutely zero ties except for a paycheck, you're not only insulting the DJ, but you're insulting the entire furry fandom because you're saying you're not good enough. None of you are good enough for our convention. No furry is good enough for Furry Week in Atlanta. What the? I guess that's it. I wanted to rant about it. That's my rant. Um, go watch Turning Red. It's really good. Uh, a lot more feel good than this video. So uh, until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.